Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, well, today is Friday, right? So very nice. So let's rest. And next week, um, also remember that we're gonna finish this module. We need to finish the whole platform by Thursday. And uh, also, if you receive the Insta for survey, we need to wait because we always do that on the last class. And let's check about the platform first, of course, as usual. So this is it. This is um, the class of tonight, okay? And also uh, this is the homework for tonight. That is the 3.9. We just need to click on which one is the correct option. That will be it. Well, right, we're going to check about the assistance then. Okay, let me then just check into that. Okay, Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Alexana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present. Good. Everybody's. Uh, this is Ana Claudia teacher present. Okay, very good. And Giselle is always also. And this is Fernando teacher. Okay, very good. Perfect. Thank you. Teacher, I have one minute. I have an emergency. I will. Ah, okay. I, I, I need to go out, but I will stay connected as a listener. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So I hope everything goes well. Perfect. So, my friends, um, today is Friday. Remember that in one week we will be finishing uh, the whole uh, platform, the whole module. Uh, let's move on with the platform. That is a very important thing. And also remember about the survey. I was telling at the beginning that the survey of Insaforb, that is something we need to, uh, we need to, to wait to do on that one until the next Friday. Okay. So, only that. We're going to start with a little video, so, and we're going to check some things. Let me know uh, what you understand or what comments you have about the, the video. So here we go. Hey, naturals, what's up? It's your favorite American English teacher, Gabby, here with a Go Natural English lesson to help you to stop translating everything from English into your native language, in your head, in your mind, in your brain, in your noggin, and to start thinking only in English. It is possible, believe me. No matter what level you're at right now, it's possible to think in English. And I'm gonna show you how. I'm gonna give you nine tips that will help you on your journey to thinking just like a native English speaker. So if this is interesting to you, then keep watching. So first of all, what's the problem with translating everything into your native language before you come up with a response in English? Well, if you're in a conversation or some situation where you need to really process information quickly and be able to respond 
respond rapidly in an appropriate, timely manner, then you really don't have time to translate. Even if you're super smart, which I know you are, and you're really good at English, which I know you are, it still takes time to process all the information you're getting in English into your native language and then think in your native language, okay, what am I going to say, how am I going to respond, and then translate that back into English. It's a lot of work for your brain to do, and no matter how awesomely intelligent you are, it's going to take too long in a native speed, kind of fast, back and forth conversation. So if you are in a social situation, if you're in a meeting at work, if you are at a presentation and you want to ask questions, you really need to be able to think in English. So the problem started with the way that we learn foreign languages. This happened to me when I was learning Spanish in the classroom. How did we learn? We learned through translating. With Spanish, I learned that one is uno and two is dos. And uh, let's see, coffee is cafe and so on. So, of course, it's easy and it makes sense to begin this way because we know vocabulary in our native language, but it actually is hurting us once we get into conversational English, or in my case, conversational Spanish. So when I left the classroom, when I left my English, uh, sorry, my Spanish classroom, and I tried to have a conversation with native Spanish speakers, I was like in total shock. My jaw hit the ground because I couldn't understand anything and I definitely couldn't respond because I was trying to just identify a few words that I could recognize, that I could hear, that I could listen to, that I could comprehend and then translate those into English and then think in English to translate back into Spanish and I was a wreck. So I don't want that to happen to you. Maybe you know how that feels already. Let me give you some suggestions to get you started thinking in English. First, let's start small. Understanding everything in English and being able to respond in English is like a big meal. That's a lot of vocabulary or a lot of food to digest, right? So let's start by taking small bites and digest thoroughly. So start by doing small daily activities in English. So for example, Every day I take my dog for a walk or sometimes we go for a run. So sometimes I talk to him, usually in English, but sometimes, just to really confuse him, I talk to him in Spanish. And instead of saying, come, let's go, I'll say, ven, vamonos, right? So you could do this in English, maybe if you have a pet. Or if you don't have a pet, there's other ways too. I bet you have a phone. If you have a smartphone, you could set that in English so that every time you open up your phone, there's English vocabulary for you to work with. This is an example of an everyday activity, probably multiple times a day you're looking at your phone, that you could do in English. And maybe there's other things that you can think of too. So what are some other suggestions of small daily activities that you could do in English? Comment, let me know what you think. Okay, next listen to more English. This doesn't even have to take up more of your time. You can give yourself an immersive experience in English no matter where you are. Open up your laptop or your smartphone and download some podcasts in English or listen to internet radio or put on a video on YouTube or on Netflix in English and play it in the background while you're doing other work that doesn't require intense focus. I love doing this when I'm just doing housework or like organizing stuff around my room or my office or whatever, I will listen to music in other languages because I love learning the lyrics to songs in Spanish or in Portuguese or in other languages that I want to learn. So most recently I was listening in Spanish to the song called Llorarás, which is a famous salsa song. I highly recommend it if you'd like to get into salsa. But anyway, let me continue with tips for thinking in English. 
Three, try guessing or planning what native English speakers are going to say in that next conversation or in that presentation or whatever situation that you're going to be in in English. So when you predict based on your life experience what you think people are going to say, you will be more prepared and more confident. You're preparing your brain to receive that information and you'd be surprised probably like eight out of ten times you're going to be correct. Now don't get too attached to your prediction because of course other people don't know that script that's going on in your head so be prepared for something different to come out of people's mouths but just by exploring the different options or your prediction or guess of what you think will happen you're going to feel way more confident and you're going to be able to process that information faster and to think in English yourself because you're already thinking when you predict what's going to happen in a conversation. Four, stop learning exclusively through translation, especially once you're out of your beginner English class. We have to learn through association, through experience, through observing, watching, listening, through touching, through your life experience. You have to associate the word with the meaning and not the English word with your native language word, okay? Words are just words, they're just letters, okay? The real true meaning is what you understand and then you can attach that to the word, okay? So book is not necessarily libro in in Spanish or Portuguese. It's a thing with pieces of paper and writing that I can read and learn from. So I hope this is making sense, but you have to stop learning exclusively through translation. And next, very closely related, number five is to stop using a bilingual dictionary. The best use of your bilingual dictionary where there's English and then your native language is actually as like a, um, a coaster where you put your coffee cup on um, on top of your table so it doesn't leave a circle on your table. That's the best use for it because if you continue to use this bilingual dictionary to learn vocabulary in English, you're always going to be practicing translation. So just use that thing as a coaster or whatever and use a monolingual dictionary instead. Monolingual means one language, so English to English. And you're going to exponentially expand your English language uh, vocabulary when you do this. Next, number six, label objects in your environment in English. You can just do this in your head. It's super simple, super fast and easy, doesn't cost anything. Or you could actually write the words on paper and tape those labels right to the objects or use sticky notes or something. And for example, if I see a book and I'm learning Spanish, then I would write on my sticky note libro. And I think I said libro before, but that's actually Portuguese. I get confused between Spanish and Portuguese. I will tell you honestly, it is not always easy to learn both at the same time. So anyway, libro is book if I'm learning Spanish. Maybe libro if I'm learning Portuguese. Hey, if I'm learning Arabic, it's kitab. You can help me with my pronunciation in the comments. But put a label on everyday objects. This is really especially helpful for beginners intermediate level English learners, but it can be fun to do just to remind yourself to think in English at any level. Number seven, talk to yourself in English. When you talk to yourself out loud, it does so many good things for you. Not only are you going to practice your pronunciation, your speaking, your vocabulary, your fluency, but you are developing that thinking in English skill. So what kind of things should you say when you're talking to yourself out loud in English? And when should you do this? Well, first of all, I would suggest doing this perhaps in the privacy of your own home maybe not around your coworkers or people that might think you've gone crazy. So what do you tell yourself? Um, well, you could ask yourself questions. For example, right now I'm thinking, what am I going to eat for lunch today? So if I am trying to improve my Portuguese, I might think to myself and say out loud, 
que vou comer hoje para almoço? Yeah, I think that's right. If it's not, you can tell me in the comments. But it's okay if you make a mistake talking out loud to yourself. If your grammar is not perfect, if your pronunciation is not perfect, it's okay because the point is not to be perfect. The point is for you to develop that habit of thinking and speaking the language. So it's totally okay. Just make a mental note of what you're not sure about. If you are not sure if you're supposed to use like the article the or whatever it is you're not sure about and then you could ask someone just like I asked you in the comments you could ask your native speaker friend your teacher or do some research online another way I really love to talk to myself out loud in languages I'm learning is to sing a song so I mentioned earlier that I was listening to a song called Yoraras, which means you will cry oh it's kind of a sad song actually but I love to actually sing that song when I'm just you know doing house chores or walking my dog I'll just be like yeah sé que tú no quieres que yo a ti te quiera so I'm not a great singer so I'm gonna stop but just to give you an example that is what I love doing and I might even mix in some salsa dance moves while I'm singing eight just start thinking in English with a mantra or a motto or some phrase that just gets you started like on autopilot automatically. So my phrase might be, I am improving my English every day. And I would say that in English out loud to myself or just think it, okay? If I'm learning Portuguese, I might say to myself, Bom dia, cada dia estou melhorando meu português. Yes! Okay, <laughs> like with emotion is really important. Really, really important. Even if I look crazy, it doesn't matter. It does help you and it lifts your spirits and it gives you energy to improve your language skills. Finally, number nine, our last tip to help you think in English is to just do a little bit each day. So don't force yourself to think in English all day, every day from the get-go or from the beginning. Just start with 30 seconds. I'm sure that you can think in English for 30 seconds. You could set an alarm. Maybe every day at 9 a.m. you're going to think in English for 30 seconds. So, you know, on your phone, put an alarm for 9 a.m. and you can title it Think in English and then set your timer for 30 seconds and just think in English no matter how simple or how silly it is. You can just say hello to yourself over and over and over for 30 seconds if that's the best you can do. I know you can do better. I know, <laughs> but it's just an example that it doesn't matter how complicated your English is when you train to think in English. What does matter is that you start and that you are consistent. So do a little bit every day and you're going to be thinking in English all day long in no time. If you loved these suggestions, let me know in the comments. Share this video with your friends who are learning English or maybe your friends who are learning other languages because these tips totally apply to any language you are learning. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Go Natural English here on YouTube. Visit the website at gonaturalenglish.com. Okay, so what did you get from this uh, video, my friends? Comments. Okay, it's so important because I think... <laughs> Everybody try to translate, everybody try to understand in the, in the native language, in my case, Spanish, and then try to reconfigure the answer in, in English. And we lost uh, time in uh, speaking and understanding. And there is some important advice, like labeling all of the scene in uh, surround you. Hello. Hello. Maybe he lost. I guess that we'll, we'll lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess. Uh, here he comes. <laughs>
We can hear see you right now. We then. can hear you. We can hear your keyboard. Okay. okay. All right. He went away. I ah, here he comes. Hey, we can see you now and we can hear hello, you. Hello, hello. Okay, yeah. yes. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's my my internet is I have the computer connected to, to the, the, the cable and but the phone is with the wireless wireless and then this is a having problems. Okay, mm -hmm. that is important. It's important to do th th that things, to talk to yourself, to label, to listen uh, songs. I, I think it's a, a good idea. Listen, try to sing uh, when you're alone for, for a day. <laughs> the people have probably listened to you, but there are important advices that uh, to learn to sing in English. Yeah, definitely. So I believe that this is one of the most important thing at the level that we are right now. I know that some of you, you speak a little bit, uh, I mean, in English and that's it, right? It's something that we need to do all the time. And uh, my best advice for you is to do that all day long. I mean, not only 30 seconds. Of course, if you're working, if you're speaking with other people, I mean, at that time now, right? But whenever you're thinking, if you start thinking all in English, that is going to be a good advice. Um, any other comment about the video? Any other opinion? What did you get or anything? Well, sure. In my opinion, I I believe that the video gave a lot of uh, uh, advice regarding uh, how to improve uh, your listening, maybe your vocabulary, and also. It's really good because, as you said uh, before, uh, we are in uh, most of the highest level that we have to be, and uh, we need to improve our English uh, and also our pronunciation. Maybe, as she said, that maybe not the pronunciation as as uh, perfect, or maybe as to be a uh, like a uh, native. But maybe we can continue, we can uh, avoid a conversation with them. Okay, so definitely. Uh, go ahead. Good. That's good. And also, I apply some, some advices that uh, he tell us before. Okay. So, yeah, definitely. I believe that this is one of the most important parts. I know that at the very beginning, everybody's translating. Everybody uh, wants to know what is the meaning of this. Uh, and sometimes we get confused because as she says, it has many meanings sometimes. So we need to understand the word, the usage of the word, I mean, and that's it, right? Uh, and uh, think in English, I believe at, at the level that you are right now, since we are almost finishing uh, the, uh, the whole thing, the whole classes, uh, you need to continue, uh, and then you need to start thinking all in English, speak as, as much as you can, practice, or, uh, I mean, whatsoever that is going to give you more vocabulary and a way for you to speak a little bit faster is going to be a great idea. Good. Any other comments or opinion? There are a, a, a good app that I don't know if the people is using it is uh, Duolingo. It's gone again. Oh, yeah, internet sometimes is, is lousy, right? So, yeah, we need to just wait. So, uh, yes, uh, some apps are an important websites. You can start reading. You can watch videos. I mean, I believe that um, there are many things. You don't have to do just one thing. But the most important is in your mind because you need to. You need to express. You need to um, think about what you want to say. So that will be the most important. But teacher, they mm -hmm. had an, an app that can analyze uh, your pronunciation and give is uh, basis on uh, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't remember it's Elsa something like that. Mm, okay, and, didn't uh, know. You can uh, the day this app can hear you and uh, give some advice. What is the level you are? Uh, it's very good. 
Uh, so you have to pay for that one or is uh, for free? It's uh, uh, half and a half. There is a part that is, are free, but uh, if you want to pay, but it's uh, very, very good. Mm, okay, interesting, very good. So yeah, we can research. And uh, nowadays, I mean, technology helps us a lot. So we, we can research and check what is good. I mean, sometimes little tools that are integrated already for years in the tools that we have, um, we can use them. For example, I, I guess I told you already that uh, if you create a document uh, through Google Drive, uh, there is an option for you to dictate. So definitely, if you have a good pronunciation, the, the document is going to recognize the words perfectly, right? If it's not, go if it's not correct, you need to improve on that one. So, uh, and yeah, there are many things that we can do. So that is maybe the objective of that little video. So we can move on. We, uh, as long as we finish the class, we don't have to stop. So, so we can continue in many different ways. All right, so it's time for the homeworks. Uh, we're gonna start with the words. Who wants to be the first one? Me, teacher. Very good, let's listen to David. Okay, let me share. I heard, I, I, I found this. Is it something like you shared the last uh, day? Okay. Uh, there are some like uh, the nine, number nine. I don't know this word. The the day after tomorrow is called over tomorrow. I, I don't know if it's correct, <laughs> but I didn't <laughs> know over tomorrow. Yeah, and, that's, uh, that's uh... <laughs> and then the number eleven, the white case that holds the coat of on a bottle of champagne is called an agrofe. <laughs> <laughs> and the number thirteen, when you combine a question mark with an exclamation mark, I don't know this this is possible. I don't know. This referred to as interroban. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, it's important. The arm holding closest where the sleeve are sewn is called arm C. Uh, the, some curiosity, but uh, uh, illegible handwriting, number 17, is called griffonage. I, I have griffonage, yeah. <laughs> illegible handwriting. <laughs> That is important. I don't know, but this is interesting. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. So, yes, I mean, sometimes there are many words that we don't know or we don't use, right? So, and they exist, they are there. Some of those words sometimes are kind of fancy, but they exist. I mean, even in Spanish, there are words that exist. I mean, for certain activities, there are names, but we just say the description of the activity, right? So, because Sometimes we don't know. And it's a very interesting way for, for, for everybody to learn more vocabulary. So go beyond. Uh, very good. Very interesting. Thank you, David. Okay. Who wants to be the next one? Okay. I guess I will choose only a few today. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Dora Elizabeth. Okay. Uh, I, I have a, the word recruit. It's a process for hiring a personal. Okay, recruit, okay. Recruit. The other is a scapegoat. When a person is guilty, but not necessarily is guilty. It's only for uh uh, found a, a, a person guilty for maybe this person no 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 do bad something but is is a uh, choose guilty mm, okay. for for just or for the people okay. mm -hmm. the other is cutting age. The new most advanced in area specific uh, 
in science, studios, or sport, with anything, uh, art in the, in the activity. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good, very interesting. So cutting edge, yes, that is a very common word that we can find in readings about technology and things like that one because it's going to be related to the finest, the the top of the notch uh, things. So it's going to be something like that. Very good. Thank you, Dora. Okay, let's listen now to Jose Marcus. Hello. Oh, we cannot hear you. Um, well, sorry, all. Hello. Uh oh, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. The first word is Paladin. Paladin is uh, like a noun, determining advocate or defender of a noble cause. For example, a paladin is a military leader or medieval prince. Uh, is it possible for you to, uh, to send that on the chat? Uh, next. Message? Okay. Thank you. Okay. In rem like rem, I don't know what it says. How it's pronounced. Uh, it's a bear. It's like to moan, cry, or weep. Also, it can be used like to sob or shed tears, rain. And the last one is Stardust. Stardust, I hear it in a song. Uh, the title, just the title. It's a noun. It's like a navely romantic quality. Stardust. Okay. Very interesting, very nice. So we have nicknames for the girlfriends. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Thank you. A very interesting <laughs> words, uh, Marcus. Now we're going to listen to Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Okay. Uh, I was reading some words that maybe uh, we know the, the the meaning in a different way, but for example, uh, 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 idyllic. Idyllic is like a uh, when when you watch something beautiful or glorious, it's a, a different different description, but you can use it is idyllic. Uh, uh, is it possible for you to type it on the chat so everybody can? Uh, yes, see? I I will I will put in the chat right now. Thank you, thank you. What okay. Is the uh, uh, we have a. Uh, Little baby, I didn't know that little baby is a is a melody for babies, a sound for babies. Little baby, little baby, sorry. Okay. A lullaby is the pronunciation. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, oblivion. I remember maybe this word in uh, some. Uh, uh, I uh, a movie. I, I don't know about this, but that means it's like a for forgot something, or maybe it's a on a state of unconscious. On unconscious, when you are maybe lost and you are looking in front of you, but you you it's like you are in watching in front of you. You are in your mind thinking about anything. You are oblivious. I will, I will put the last. That's the one, I believe in. Very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, lullaby is something very common. I mean, if you have babies and you sing songs for them to, to sleep, that is a lullaby, right? Very nice. Okay, the next one uh, is going to be Giselle. Hello, Giselle. Is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Perfect. Okay, well, I'm going to type the, the words. Um, okay, the first is this one. 
I have troubles with the pronunciation. I don't know if it is berate or berate. Uh, berate. Berate. Okay. Berate is something. Uh, when is when you scold or criticize someone angrily. For me, it's very new. Berate. I never heard about the word. The second one is this one. Uh, This one, Aquis C. I don't know if that's the correct pronunciation. Aquias. Aquias. <laughs> Aquias? Aquias. Okay. <laughs> Aquias. Okay. It sounds nice. <laughs> okay. Aquias is accept something reluctantly but without protest. And the third one is this one. Deep fake, and deep fake is an image recording that has been convincingly altered to misrepresent someone as doing or saying something that was not actually done or said. So that's my three words. Very good, very interesting. Nice, thank you very much. Okay, and now, hi, thank you. Now we're gonna listen to uh, Steve. Teacher, sorry, I'm still or I try to pay attention. Okay, so you're I can't. Saying, okay, no worries, that's fine. Okay, My so apologies. oh no, no worries, not a problem. So let's check then uh, Juan Miguel Brand. Okay. Uh, those are my three words. The first one, I will write it down in the chat. Applicate, yeah. Applicate is the action uh, that you do when you are taking like a zoom bait, yeah. Um, for example, I have a cat, yeah. So uh, I could say my my cat is applicate. On, on the couch, yeah. In other words, you could say my cat is taking a Zumba over the couch or on the couch, yeah. So that's applicate, like the sun, sun bathing, yeah. Mm -hmm. The next one is, let me check. Serendipity, yeah. Uh, serendipity is the action. Yeah, if we could describe like this, the action of uh, something might miraculous, but but lucky. Yeah. Um, for example, if you find uh, maybe. One hundred dollars in a in a in a jacket, yeah, that you don't use since, for example, since two years ago, yeah. So you have a serendipity moment, yeah, like a lucky moment and kind of mirac miraculous, yeah, kind a kind of a miracle, yeah. And the third one is. Is this crepuscular? Yeah, uh, this word is related with, um, uh, for example, um, or we could say about uh, people, no, not people, maybe animals, yeah, uh, that they only appear or they only uh, go to to hunt on the um, for example on the down yeah and and dusk yeah when the sun is rising 
or when the sun is um, <laughs> the opposite of rising? Getting down. Or, right? Okay, when the sun is down, yeah. Okay. So crepuscular. Uh, and there are many, obviously, maybe not here, but in Africa, in, in the jungle or something like this, there are many, many animals that are crepuscular. Yeah, for example, little uh, uh, mice that they go for hunt, not for hunt maybe, but when they look for, for their food, yeah, and they don't go in the day or they don't go out on, on the day and they don't go out over the night, just in the when the sun is rising and when the sun is 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 down. Yeah, crepuscular. Okay, very mm -hmm. good, perfect. Thank you very much. Very interesting. I remember that there's a name a, a, a movie that is called Serendipity, and actually something like that one. I mean, he founds this beautiful women, and she gives he, her number but he lost the number he i don't know yeah where... yeah yeah and that did... movie is is great yeah it's a good movie it's... yeah yeah they, they, there are uh, there is a man and a woman that they like each other yeah but but the woman says if we are for each other I will write down my number phone in this paper or something. No, I think it was a a bill. A bill. Yeah. yeah. Or or something like this. Yeah. And we have to go up in the elevator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, in the elevator. And we can we have to find each other at any moment that you want so the both of them have to press one button and if they find each other so they were for each other yeah and at the end the woman give the the bill to the to, to someone yeah and after a couple of years uh, after that uh, that encounter uh, the man found the the bill, so I think they they called the woman, and they start start dating or, or something like this. But it's uh, that that moment when the when the man found the bill is the serendipity moment. Yeah, like a mirac miraculous. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's a romantic movie that everyone have to see. Yeah, I remember that movie. I saw that one. And yes, it's, it's very interesting. I mean, all the thing. I believe that that is not possible. I mean, if a girl gives me her number, I probably won't see her again. But uh, that happens in the movie. And that's why it's called serendipity, because it's something that is almost impossible, but actually happens, right? Okay, very good, perfect. My friends, so we're gonna continue with William Alexander. I have this, I have, it is a phrase, for example, I'm on the fence. Okay. Uh, it is when you are not sure about your decision or you have two options, for example. I don't know if I will move there. I'm on the fence when you have a doubt. And the other expression is, I feel like, okay, you use this when you want to do something or yeah you, you have want to do or for example if you, have, if you, if you want to eat or drink uh, for example I feel like having a salad and the last one I'm going to 
going to hit the sack. Here's when you are going to bail. And that's it, teacher. Very good, very nice expression. Then, yeah, I'm going to hit the sack. Whenever we finish the classes, you go and do that one. You go to bed. Perfect. Very nice. Uh, interesting, these ones. So um, the next one is going to be Wendy Patricia. Not possible for Wendy. Uh, Anna Claudia. Okay, teacher, uh, what I found, um, I found this, it says here that it's a, it's a noun. I'm going to type it in. Here it is. Instead of saying false with ending in K and S, this is like a, vari a variant of, of that uh, noun. Instead of, of using KS at the end, uh, it's commonly used folks. It sounds similar. And in the same, uh, it's like an inclusive spelling. It was saying it that when I found it, it says that this is like kind of inclusive spelling. It's not something that is, I don't know, in Spanish, we have the real academy for the language. I guess in English is something there's an institution or something like that. So this word is like not recognized, like a new word in quotations. It's like a variant a spelling of folks. And in the same uh, way, I found that also people use Latinx <laughs> with X at the, at the end. But okay, the, the other word that I found, uh, this is... Um, an adjective. Uh, this one mix. I'm sorry, mixed gender. This is used when there is, for example, a meeting, or union, or a party, uh, and there are people that is related to two or more or different genders. Uh, events that where there are mixed genders teams. Uh, something like that. Now, you know, around the world, there are different, we commonly know men and, and women, but now there are different uh, types, new words, new genders, they say. I don't know if it's, they are recognized by science, teams, but that word is used in that, in that way when people is referring that uh, there are people mixed gender in whatever place. And the other one I found is like an like an uh, abbreviation and it sounded very interesting uh, to me is this one. Abbreviation to refer to a woman of color. The first time that I saw that. So when people is talking about the woman of color, well, it's like an abbreviation. Okay. Very, very interesting. Thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. And yes, sometimes it happens. Sometimes there are words that they change some letters and it's the way mm -hmm. they do it. Or there are some abbreviations. So that is a very good, mm -hmm. good example. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, right. Let's check then now uh, Jarvin Isaac. Is it possible for you, Jarvin? Not possible. Uh, Jose Wilfredo. Yes. <clears throat> well, I have three words here. I will share the first one. The first one on the chat. I don't know if someone can, uh, uh, someone have been uh, heard Hollywood. Well, uh, Hollywood uh, is when you having a means. Uh, well, Hollywood means an old and unpleasant feeling in your stomach, and is often associated with illness, nervous, or uh, crisis. 
Okay, good. So curly wobbles. Curly wobbles. Then, second one is malarkey. I don't know if you heard this word or heard this word. Oh. No, I haven't. Okay. This word, uh, a word that since uh, come back in United States recently, markedly refers to words that are insincere uh, and talk uh, that is a particular foolish. Uh, and also the word first came into the popular usage in the 19, 1920s in Thaddeus. As doesn't seem to have a particular root. That's malarkey. Mm -hmm. So it's similar to Polish. Okay. And the last one is Hathko. It's not a cat calling or something like that, but it is maybe related to the noise that the cat made. Because a cat call is a loud shot or whistling. Uh, that's a high sound expressing disapproval, especially made by people in a crowd. Or even when the people made uh, some practice. Okay. Those are the three words that I have. Very good, very interesting. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was remembering a word that is catfish. Have you ever heard that word? Catfish is very, very common. And now that we have uh, social media, I mean, catfish is when, for example, imagine that you are uh, there on Facebook or Instagram or any social media, and then you uh, find somebody interesting and you start chatting and that person seems very nice i mean very good and you say i'm i want to meet that person maybe in a relationship uh, but then you realize that it's not true it's, it's a lie the person uh, is totally different so it's, it's a, that is catfish catfish yeah uh, it's good word. very good perfect thank you very much interesting words um now we're going to listen to Francisco Eduardo. Not possible. Uh, Fernando Marvin, is it possible for you or still not? I guess not. Mm, okay. Uh, Roxana Yvette. Yeah. Okay. My first word is homeless. Homeless is used to describe a person who is a complete mess and fascinating at the same time. For example, she is completely out of control and a whole mess. And um, I was looking another information about that uh, to try to understand. And in Spanish, it's like a disaster, right? Mm -hmm. When a person is a little crazy, like the picture. <laughs> yeah. Fascinating. Is belleza rara, weird uh, beauty, yeah. or something like that. Okay. Yeah, I, I saw the picture and I remember somebody, to be honest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, that's, well, anyway. The second word is janky. Janky, uh, you use janky when you try to refer to when someone is um, dubious or the poor or poor quality. Uh, for example, when we are uh, looking for a car, we can say, uh, I shouldn't have bought that used car. It, it's way too janky. It's like um, you can find another better option. It's not, it's, or 
I understand that it, it, it is like a bad quality. You can find another better that you are looking for. Mm -hmm. And the sweet one is careful. If you hear someone say careful, they are saying surprised or shocked. For example, it is like careful. In that um, sentence, it means that it's a surprise, like the fish. <laughs> okay, very good, perfect, interesting words. Uh, thank you very much for that one. I guess um, all the words are always very interesting, right? So I guess this is a very good homework that, I mean, for first of all, you need to go and, and search about the words, what words can I bring? And then here in the class, you are able to see the words and check, oh, that is interesting. I didn't know that one. So it's a careful, for, right? Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Also, I will put here in the chat the other one that I was telling you the other time uh, that we were just practicing, the Watch Macaulay. Do you remember? Uh, so give me the Watch Macaulay. So which Watch Macaulay? The one that is on the other, next to the other Watch Macaulay. <laughs> I mean, it's like when we say in Spanish, volado, right? So mm -hmm. that exists in English, and it's that word. So it's like, I don't know. You can use that in many ways. But it's a, a deformation of the language. I mean, if you see the word, which you may call it, is what you may call it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like that one. It's like whatever the name is, give me that that thing over there, right? So... That is it, the word chamacali, but it exists the word. I mean, <laughs> that, people use that word a lot, yeah. They use a lot, there. <laughs> mostly mothers, right? To say, Give me the word okay. Imagine <laughs> or say if we are trying to understand what are they saying and hear something like that, what it's confused. <laughs> Yeah, exactly like in Spanish, it's going to be exactly the same. I mean, sometimes I remember my, my mother used to say, give me the huachamacare that is in, inside of the huachamacare and next to the other green huachamacare. I mean, <laughs> what? what are you talking about? I don't, I don't get it. So that yeah. that is a word that exists. exists and yeah, you, you can use it uh, when you're speaking with somebody. Yeah, it's, it's something that you can you can use. Very good. Perfect. I guess nobody else is missing for the words, right? So everybody did it. So we're gonna go to the other um, to the other homework. So um, today you we're going to bring a story, not that short and not that long. Um, that is a nice story that you saw in a movie, in a video clip, or um, in a book, or I don't know something interesting that. It reflects something that helped you understanding something. I don't know. So you're free to tell a story the way that you want. So um, I don't know who wants to be the first one. That is the first question. Always is the first question. Me, teacher. David, you are always the one. Very good. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. That you're always there. Thank uh, you. So let's okay. go and listen to David. I, I write the story and I... Uh... I asked to chat GPT that uh, write a better story and the chat GPT write a, a good story. <laughs> I will read the, the ones I, I, I write. <laughs> and, okay. Okay. Uh, there was a, a young man carrying a lot of books. A group of students were coming in the opposite direction and started mocking him. They pushed him so hard that he fell down and all the book were scattered. Another boy that saw the situation ran to him and helped him to pick up the books and to carry them home. They start talking and share his name and phone numbers. The helping boy asked the other if he wanted to go, to go out sometimes, play football, see a movie, or the other things that teenagers like to do. All of the things were well, and they finally graduated. The first boy was asked to give the speech at the graduation. 
And he starts saying things to all the people who helped him to get graduated. The first in the list was the boy that helped him. Seems to him, I am here tonight, say the, to the attendants. One day, continue, I was trying to kill myself. I didn't want my father's need to come to university for my sins. So I decided to bring them home. When I was attacked for a group of students, nobody cared about that, only this guy. He helped me. He was a kind person for me. He gave me some of the sin that I had believed the loss in me, interest, respect, attention, and made me feel alive again. So I decided to continue with my life. And for that reason, I'm here tonight. Both of the boys were in tears. They stand up and gave each other a big and fraternal hug. At this moment, all of the people were in tears. The lesson, be kind with others. You don't know the crisis that everyone is confronting. One word, one gesture, one coffee, one hook can make a big difference in somebody's life. Okay. That's all, teach. Very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I guess I I heard something about that one uh, before. It's a very nice story. I, I really like it. Sometimes I use that when I want to motivate people on, on change behaviors and things. Like that. So it's a very good one. So anybody has a question for David or a comment? Nothing at all. Yeah, it's a very good one, actually. It's a very good one. And uh, yeah, it actually is one of my favorites. So it's, it's something that I, I don't remember where I, I read that one. But there are things that really touch people. And some new generations, they don't hear this story. So it's a very good one. Okay, who wants to be the next one? Me, teacher. Good, let's listen to Roxana. But in my case, it's experience. Okay. Well, um, let me see. Um, when I was a little kid, I loved to burn um, fireworks. Mm -hmm. And I remember that when I was around 10 years ago, I remember uh, that in secret, I have I, I had some uh, saving. So in secret, I went to the um, store, to the little store, and buy some parameters. You know what parameters? But big, big oh. parameters. And uh, silvadores. Parenthesis. That word existed in English, palometa y, y, y silvadores. Uh, I, I, can, yeah, I believe that they can they can exist. I mean, uh, Silvador, it could be a whistle, a firecracker, for example. Uh, palometa, I don't know if, I mean, uh, maybe there is a name for that one, but it's not like palometa. It's going to be something totally different, right? But the whistle, okay. the whistle, firecracker, yeah. Okay. Well, uh, I, remember, I remember that um, I was born in front of my... my my house, my house, and everything was okay. But one of them um, explodó. Explodó. Exploded. Exploded. Thank you. Exploded in my in my hand, and by that time, I always hear a little thing. <laughs> And I never say that situation to my parents or I'm a doctor. Just surviving with the surprise and the moral, moraleja. The, yeah, the learning of the story. Yeah, the learning of that, of the story is that you need to 
be careful with your children because maybe they are a little crazy with me. And spend the money with um, dangerous firewalls. Okay, very good, perfect. Thank you for that experience. Actually, that happened to me as well. I don't think it was a big one. It was like a regular one. I remember that I was a kid. I don't remember what age was I. And I was, uh, you know, you are right because I don't know what happened to you, but my my parents, they gave me the, a bunch of firecrackers and I was on the street by myself alone, right? <laughs> I was so happy, but they were inside of the house. So that was not good. They mm -hmm. would say, uh, be careful on this and this. But I remember, I remember that that one, I mean, it was, I, I turned it on and I throw it and didn't explode. And I say, well, what happened to this dinner? And I went and I got it and I was looking at it and exploded. And I mean, they were very dangerous. They, the sound of that one it was so huge. And I remember that, I mean, my hand, I, I got a little bit of blood. Uh, I mean, it was huge. And it was I got burned. I mean, I I it was very I, a lot of pain. And I went inside of the house and I put the hand in my uh, in the water, you know. And I was mm -hmm. like for a while, and then I continue. Right? I mean, <laughs> the thing is that maybe we well in my case uh, after that I learned to to uh, tirar. Como tirar los cohetes. Throw away. Throw away, because um, always I say, I, I, I was um, doing that movement. That is the problem, because the panometa was here. And when I was, <laughs> explode, yeah. explode here, here. So after that, I learned. <laughs> Okay, yeah, they they were good experiences, but also dangerous. Right? I mean, uh, the good thing is that we are here laughing at, at that one, uh, but the bad thing is that it could happen something dangerous to us, right? So, mm -hmm. and you are right. So, my my boy, he really likes to to burn firecrackers, but I always there with him, right? So, okay, I'm watching him, and mm -hmm. I mean because many things can happen and you don't want that to happen to them. So, That's <laughs> right. <laughs> very good. Perfect. Thank you very much. Who wants to be the next person? Me, teacher. Good. Let's listen to Dora <laughs> Elizabeth. It's uh, about the movie. I watched the movie uh, Few days, few days ago, okay. uh, it's a ref, uh, the movies is a is what style is a Italian movie is referring a man the man is hard worker uh, he worker 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 is more important the worker with your, his family. Uh, she, uh, he uh, meet uh, his wife in a party in a party in, then she, he married with, with she and when when he when he uh, his brother is in 40, 40 years all uh, the wives prepare the a surprise party, but he he uh, arrived late uh, at the party, too late because he uh, do something before to me arrive in his house and. The next day, uh, she, uh, they, uh, he wake up, uh, he has uh, 41 years, past one year, 
but he don't remember nothing. Uh, the wife is a uh, pregnant. And then all again, he sleep and pass other, other year. And he, when he wake up, at the, his, his daughter, yes, 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 uh, is a baby. In each uh, sleep, he sleep is past other 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 year, and he no remember the doing nothing the in the last year. Uh, finally, in when past year is. Past many many things in his life. You his his dad died. His uh, your his best friend is sick, and his wife is uh, with another boyfriend. He's he, they are separated because he only think in the work, no have time for you know, his family or friends or his daddy. Um, until he uh, work, he in the world. He said eh, a, a others partners, no, is no, I can keep on that. I I have a vacation. And when he have a vacation, eh, eh, I, I don't care the contracts in the in the world, no, you can do that. Yeah, I was. I need to vacation because you, I need to pass time with my family. And when she come back to uh, his house, she, uh, uh, he is he's with a tire and your wife, the mother of the tire. And she, uh, he, is uh, told a uh, the wife he is a uh, um, he said a uh, a wife uh, go to the vacation together uh, and is is the wife said uh, in your job no I don't care I have a vacation with with you in my in our tower and pass Past time with a daughter, read a a a, a, a talent, uh, play with his his daughter, and when he when it's the night, the night uh, uh, I sleep, he very uh, was very sad because I he think the when we wake up. Is a, another year, and but no, in this time the no 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 is another year. It's another day, and he was happy. In in this case, the the reflection is we I some people or oh, we uh think more in the in the world or on the materials uh, and the money or, or thing materials and no enjoy us with uh, we are family this is the reflection okay very good interesting that is the name what is the name of the movie you say it's a uh, what's time it's in netflix ah, okay no, uh, I see, no. 
Okay. Very good. Interesting. So, yes, uh, sometimes I'm, you know, I really love movies. I actually, I really love to read. Problem with the books is that you need to invest time. Sometimes we don't have that much time. Uh, so, movies is a good chance because you see some good stories in two hours and they touch you. So, that's why I believe they are very, very good investment of time. Not all the movies are good, but if you choose careful, you can find a very nice stories there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Very good. Perfect. Thank you, Dora. Okay, so let's check with, uh, with uh, Jose Osmin. Do you have the story for today? Not possible. Okay, what about Fernando Ernesto Cosme? I don't have it, to be honest. <laughs> Okay, so you don't want to say anything. You don't have any experience that we want to share or anything like that. Uh, uh, maybe I can I can share maybe a movie that. <laughs> oh, of I, course, that is good. I watched uh, a few weeks ago. Okay. Uh, the the movie was about a uh, Ford versus Ferrari okay. when uh, I don't know maybe you you have seen the, the movie I but haven't but tell us please uh, well the, the movie is about the the, the history how how to Ferrari and, and Ford uh, had a competition and maybe I, I didn't remember the exactly the what what it was the date but uh, it's, it's about uh, how uh, Ford uh, was uh, almost in, uh, how do you say, bancarrota? I didn't remember. Bankruptcy. Ban bankruptcy. So uh, a, new, a new investor uh, bought Ford and they, have the, 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 they, they hire a, a, an engineer for the, 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 the mission was uh, to make a better motor that Ferrari in that in that in that in that time. So they 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 in, 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 start, began with the how to change the engine and how to uh, uh, how to shoot uh, the, the the pieces for maybe a, a more they they build a lot of prototypes with different pieces, with different, uh, maybe, maybe removing a, 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 a specific pieces, or the engine, maybe how to make the engine, uh, how to say Liviano? Uh, I remember light. Every, but it's special, light, more uh, light, light. Um, the, in Ferrari at that time, uh, as a, maybe the, they was the, the, the top, the top, and in, in, in velocity, uh, how do you say rapidez? A speed, in a speed, in a speed in that, in that time. And they, uh, every competition, Ferrari, Ferrari won every competition in that time. So the, the mission is uh, beat Ferrari. So uh, they, it, 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 it was a, it was uh, 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 and the engineer and the pilot of the of the, of the car. They they starting uh, with the testing with uh, changing the engine until uh, reach reach the maybe the objective that they have. Uh, when the, the 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 final race uh, uh, came in that uh, and so uh, they. The, the, the only problem that they they had in that time was the 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 system of the frenos the brake system the brake the brake the brake system uh, uh, they uh, was so hot when they was in a, a high speed so they thought they thought about uh, we can change all the system in the middle of the race. 
because uh, when they, 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 they maybe could cause uh, an accident if they didn't remove the, the, the resistance. So uh, uh, when when the, when was in the middle of the race, they for for Ferrari the were three pilots and for four three pilots. So the the the, the change of the of the brake system was the, the key for for beat Ferrari. And the three the three pilots beat uh beat Ferrari, but maybe in you see you saw see the, the, the movie you can maybe uh the, the movie is is for me is was uh, a big movie and it was in a, a real history that that happened in that time and they they, they won the the race and the the the, the, the movie maybe uh, finished uh, a little sad because the, the pilot the pilot died after the, the race they they continue working and in in maybe in a, practice race they he, he died about this the brake system <laughs> hey, man. okay very good yeah I, I haven't seen the movie actually i want to see it uh, but i really like that kind of movies as well so for example i recommend you one that is called rush uh that is also based in real life uh, very good movie it's a competition about a german guy and uh, an english uh, man, so very good movie, and it's based also in, in the real life. So it's a competition about about that what sport. Uh, yeah, I believe uh, it was Ferrari was one, and the other one was McLaren, I guess. So some ah like okay, Rush. Rush, yeah, you can look for that movie. That is a very good movie, and it's also about racing. And it is, uh, was also yeah, that's the one. <laughs> very good. So, uh, yeah. Uh, very very nice and, and also based on real life real facts so very nice okay perfect thank you fernando okay so let's listen now to iriana yisal okay teacher okay today i want to share with you i found this inspiring short story uh, about self-work uh, the name of the story is The Value of Money, and it goes like this. At the beginning of a new school year, a class teacher stands up in front of her students holding a 100 bill. She tells them, put your hands up if you want, to, if you want this money. Every hand in the room goes up, to which the teacher says, I'm going to give this money to someone here, but first, let me do this. She takes the bill and crumples it up in her hands before asking, who is still wants it? The hands stay up. The teacher then drops the bill on the floor, stomps and grins it into the ground and pick it, picks it back up. How about now? She asks again. The hands stay up. Then she told, class, I hope you see the lesson here. I didn't matter what I do to this money. You still want it because its value stayed the same. Even with its, even with its creases and dirtiness, it's still worth 100. She continues, it's the same with us. There will be similar times in your life when you're dropped, bruised, and mooded. Yet no matter what happens, you, you never lose your value. The moral of the story is uh, sometimes life's hardships are inevitable and we will all be put through the ringer at some point, often through no fault of our own. Don't let these challenges alter your feelings of self-worth. You'll always be enough. You have something unique and special to give an offer to the world. Okay, very good, very interesting. Yeah, nice. That is a good one. Uh, anybody has a question for uh, Giselle? Okay. I really love this kind of stories, to be honest with you. It's uh, very similar to the one that David says 
also uh, inspiring. Sometimes um, we need to motivate people, right? And we need to touch them in different ways because of many reasons, because of your job, because of somebody that is desperate, things that happen. So sometimes these stories, they work very, very nice. Perfect. Thank you very much, Gisol. Uh, I'm sorry, Jose Wilfredo, you were going to say something. I will be the next one. Okay, go ahead, please. Okay, this is a, it's a life story. Well, uh, when I was 16 years old, I remember that always, uh, all the days, I ride late to the school. My excuse was is because I live far away because the teacher asked me, what is the reason that you are late? And I say, no, because I I was stuck in traffic and I woke up so early to come to, to San Rica. But happened the first parents meet him. And the teacher asked my mom that where we live. And my mom told her we live around the corner. And I remember that the, the teacher asked me in the next Monday, because I remember that that meeting happened uh, in a Friday. So when I arrived to the to the school, uh, the teacher asked me, "Hey, Wilfredo, come here," uh, and, and I told her, "Okay." Uh, where, you? Uh, where you live? Uh, I live far away, teacher, and I wake up so early to to come to San Tecla. Really? Because I asked to your mom that where you live and she told me that, that you live around the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason was that I was playing video games and I go to bed so, so late. So in the morning, I don't want to, to wake up. So what I learned for that uh, little bit story is that I never had to say a lie. And that's my life story. Everybody. Oh, no, that was good. I mean, all the stories have been very nice, and this is also very good. And you are right. I mean, I believe that throughout time, we learn experiences. By experiences like that, we learn so many valuable things, right? So, uh, and then you realize that if you are always telling the truth, it doesn't matter what happens. Nothing wrong is going to happen to you, I mean. Uh, if you say, for example, to your wife, you know, we are going to go with some friends to this place and somebody says, oh, I saw your your husband there uh, with some friends. Uh, you say it already that one, so no problem, right? But if you say, oh, I have to stay working and then you go with your friends, I mean, even when you're not doing anything wrong, uh, it's going to be, I mean, why, right? So that is, those are the things that we really need to learn when we're kids. So whenever we grow up, everything goes well, right? So that is that is good. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, no problem. Thank you very much, Wilfredo. Uh, let's see. Uh, Steve, is it possible for you? Not possible, I guess. Uh, let's check with uh, with uh, Juan Miguel Brand. Not possible for Juan Miguel. Uh, William Alexander. Not, okay, here he comes. It is about the encouragement. And the story, the group of frogs. As a group of frogs was traveling through the woods, two of them fell into a deep pit when the other frogs crowd around the pit and saw how deep it was, they told the, the true frogs that there was no hop left for them. However, the two frogs decided to ignore what the others were saying and they proceeded to try and jump, jump out of the pit. Despite their effort, the group of frogs at the top of the pit were still saying that they should just give up, that they will never make it out. 
Eventually, one of the frogs took head to what the others were saying, and he gave up, falling down to his death. The other frog continued to jump as hard as he could. Again, the crowd of frogs yelled at him to stop the pain and just die. He jumped even harder and finally made it out. When he got out, when he got out, the other frog said, "Did you not hear us?" The frog explained to them that he was deaf. He thought they were encouraging him the entire time. And moral of the story: People's work can have a big effect on others' lives. Think about what you say before it comes out of your mouth. It might just be the difference between life and death. Okay, very good. Perfect, thank you. So, yeah, you are so right. So, sometimes, and that is something that also I have learned throughout time, sometimes we believe that we are able to say whatever we want, but we need to be careful on what do we say and who do we say to, because... Maybe for us, it's not important something that we say as an opinion. For other people, it's important and it may cause an effect. Might be a positive effect uh, or might be a negative effect. So yeah. definitely is, is something very, very important. And we need to be respectful, right? Because, um, yeah, we're totally different. So very good. Perfect. Thank you, William. All right, let's check with uh, Wendy Patricia. Is it possible for you? Not possible. Uh, Anna Claudia. Okay. Uh, I just want to share the um, experience for uh, what, as a company, Every year we have like a global event and we are connected through a Zoom meeting, all the company, uh, people from Pakistan, US, Philippines, and of course, El Salvador. And this is uh, an event that the name is RKO. Uh, it's like they are launching the new goals. They show and present the new strategies, new technology we are about to use or launch during the during the year with the product we sell. But always they have like a, a, a special speaker, and they always look for someone uh, that is. Uh, big influencer or someone that uh, feeds our soul let's say in that way and this year uh, the they invited to a man who played played in the uh, nfl i'm not a fan i don't understand too much about the nfl and the his name is uh, uh he is known as a uh, coach prime but his name is, I always forget his name. Uh, his name is uh, Deion Sander. Deion Sander, but he's known as Coach Prime. I haven't met or knew anything about this man before this meeting. But my God, when this man opened his mouth, my goodness, <laughs> checks your soul, checks your brain and makes you to rethink or re will what you think about success or how the way how you're doing things that you're doing and he talked and, and he gave a lot of quotes own quotes uh, all the beliefs he he been building during all this uh, time uh, he's one of the he works with uh, teenagers mostly but as with his, his experience with sports he's very challenging but there was a phrase that he said that impacted myself and and he's right one of the 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 popular phrases he always says is that 
there is a leader in every doll and there is a doll in every leader because the doll is a uh, uh, the dog is looking, is searching, but also the kindness of this animal makes you to continue and support and being with you. But also uh, in every leader, in a team leader, always there is a, a dog because of the hunting in a good way, right? And looking and searching. And, and that was impacting myself because all the CEOs in the office, right there, they were uh, giving the round of applause. So they didn't felt they didn't feel like uh, oh, he, he's comparing me with a dog or something like that. It, that man was telling all those things in a way that was like I don't know how to say, uh, Carly. It was a car Carlos Car Caricia Carlos. Uh, caress. That is caress. Caress. Can I say caressing your heart? Yes. Your oh, okay. okay. And, and it was like it was like a cocoa wash, <laughs> washing your washing your brain, your beliefs, but at the same time he was like uh, teaching us uh, different uh, things. And and in that in my case that was one of the phrases uh, that he mentioned. He was combining his experience experiences with the learnings and it, it was an interactive meeting because people was were asking about multiple things about his life etc and then all, another phrase another quote he said is that we all of us you create your own momentum and remember to dominate the momentum because that is you too. so he said a lot of things, but in the way how this man speaks, it is a black man, and you feel like I don't know if you've been if you've seen all those services, religious services with black people. Uh, there was a, a moment <laughs> during the speech that we felt like we were like in kind of those uh religious services. Uh, we are about to say amen to everything. <laughs> it was so <laughs> funny. But maybe that's the way how uh, he impressed and he managed the audience. It was impressive. So it was that that was a that that was a great experience, the the RKO this year. And always they uh invite someone special that teach us different things and that is something that i wanted to share because um he was uh, comparing us with a dog because of the loyalty stuff like that okay very good perfect thank you Anna claudia and mm -hmm. yeah sometimes that happens as well sometimes um we go to training we go to a meeting and we we don't know right we are like oh my goodness i have to go to this. another one uh-huh uh-huh but sometimes we find uh, things that are interesting that happened to me as well i remember that i, I was in a training that was good it was a good training uh, it was for for uh, 15 days but mm, there was wow. it was there was something that the person that was presenting uh, caught my attention that i mean i, I never realized about that one i mean uh, he was saying well, we need to to be patient with people because i mean we don't know what is going on with them, mm -hmm. how they feel. I mean, maybe they are sick or happen something in their lives. And he mm -hmm. said, and then he said something very interesting. I mean, he said, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, I'm going to crash my car today. Mm, that's right. Or I'm going to, uh, I'm going to have a fight with my boss and maybe get mm -hmm. fired. Or I'm mm -hmm. going to, nobody, I mean, feelings sometimes arise mm -hmm. at, at the moment because many reasons and we on the other side we need to stop and, and say okay relax mm -hmm. right so to understand exactly exactly because i mean comprehension we, right exactly so so yeah whenever we go to trainings or uh speaks uh well I, I was um for a long time i was teaching english and that's why i really love to teach english here 
Uh, and I remember that I went to trainings very interesting. Some of those were very dull, the same thing after one another. But sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes there were people that they were like, oh, my goodness, that is a good technique. That is a good method. Yeah. Like, so mm -hmm. very good. Yeah. They capture your attention. Exactly. And then you try to take that part for you mm -hmm. and, and do it right. So That's right. Very good. Perfect. Thank you for sharing, okay. Claudia. Okay. Good. Uh, Fernando Marvin, is it possible for you or maybe not? Okay. Uh, Jarvin Isaac, is it possible for you? Not possible. Francisco Eduardo. Hello, teacher. Uh, teacher, uh, can uh, give me a, a, a few minutes? Because in this moment, I, I am in my work. And then and I, I am a, a little busy, teacher. Okay, no worries. Okay, Good. thank you, teacher. So the rest of the people, I guess you made it. Uh, Juan Miguel Brand, is it possible for you? Not possible. And the rest of the people, we did it right. So I guess just a few that um, are not able to. Very good. So there are a lot of stories, uh, as I was telling you, things that touched you, right? So I believe that everybody is looking for something like that. Stories, movies, uh, songs that really touch you. And uh, people, right? People sometimes are very important in our lives. We, When we are able to speak about many things or uh, relate in different ways. So, But I guess that that is part of, of life. We are always trying to, to find something that helps us move on. Um, I know a lot of stories. I, I would like to share you just one that is very short. Uh, it's not big deal, but it was very interesting whenever I, I read it. Uh, it's about a woman. This woman is at the airport. And then at the airport, uh, it's the only place where she can find a bag of little cr uh, cookies, you know, with, they were chocolate with uh, cranberries inside and delicious, amazing. And she was very happy because she was able to, uh, before the trip, to to buy a bag of that one. She went to the store, she purchased the bag, and then she sat down uh, in the waiting room uh, for the plane to, to go off, right? Uh, and then, I mean, she started eating. She was with a bag of, of cookies, and she took one, and next to her, it was this guy that was like a like a hippie, you know, with long hair, uh, looking like dirty. But he was like reading something, and he started also to to take some uh, cookies. He took one cookie and he smiled at her, and she was, "What's going on with this guy?" I mean, he was kind of upset because I mean, he had waited a long time to. To go to the trip and also to to get those cookies that only there in the airport she can purchase she can buy uh she didn't say anything he was like oh, whatever and she took one and he took another one he always smiled and she was every time was angrier and anger she was like how is that possible this guy's taking my cookies and uh, he's smiling at me at the same time, and I don't know who he believes he is, uh, something like that. Um, and then it, there was the moment that it was the last cookie there, and she was like, my goodness, what is going to happen? Uh, and the guy didn't do anything. He said, ah, you can take that one. So she grabbed the cookie, and he she ate it. And, and then, uh, you know, there the, the monitor said, okay, the flight 636 is going to... Uh, the part right now, so you can uh, get into the into the plane. So, uh, she took her things very angry, and she get into the plane, and she was, how is that possible? That little guy and something like that. And when she was in the plane, she opened her purse, and there she had the bag of cookies, brand new, 
And then she realized that she was eating the cookies of the other guy. And that the other guy was not angry. He was smiling at her. He was like, okay, whatever, right? You can take. And actually, he gave the last cookie to her. Not a problem. So that happens sometimes, right? Sometimes we have the wrong perception of people and also the wrong perception of situations, right? Sometimes we are not correct. Sometimes we do mistakes. And before we jump into conclusions, we need to, to analyze, right? We need to research. We need to to find how is everything going, okay? And also, I mean, on the other hand, he was sharing. I mean, if, if you have the chance to share, if you have the chance to help, why not, right? So that might change the life of other people forever. Sometimes one little word, sometimes one little action can touch somebody forever and you can make the difference right we always have the chance to make that to make the difference in life of other people so they also are better people so they also can help other people so i really like the story because it's a very short story and they teach you i mean that yeah we can make mistakes we cannot be angry we cannot jump into conclusion because one person looks like this or you believe that is this way uh, and also with the situation situation sometimes i mean it can it can be totally twisted so i really like that story very good okay perfect we have a few minutes to to share is there anything else that you would like to share today you have chance Okay, there are so, so many stories. I, I remember when I, I finished my fifth grade the, in the past, there was uh, elementary, middle, and high school. But the middle in high school was only one. The, for first to five years, there was no the famous plan basico. And the, the, they came, the Beneke, Walter Beneke was the in charge of education in El Salvador in the 60s. And he made some change and created the, the three years of uh, plan basico, three years of the, the high school, middle and high school. And I finished sixth grade, and I need to go to seventh grade. But uh, it's, it needed a, a fee of 35 columns, 35 columns. But my mother don't have it. And uh, my mother said me, I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. The half of the money that she earned was uh, for rent. Commercials. We're back after these commercials. <laughs> yeah, I guess internet connection is, is failing a lot. I, I have seen some screens and also myself. Okay. Go ahead, yes. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you can. Okay, and, and uh, the, what uh, what I will do? Uh, I want to study. I want to study, and I I went to work. I went to work in the harvest of coffee. It was a difficult time because uh, you have to wake up so early at four a.m. It was so cold. And uh, there are a lot of things, and I I was 11, 11, mine 11. And, but I went and I I can get the money and I can study. And uh, so this next year, and the next year, the next year, and I finished my uh, element, my middle in high school. 
Then I I get a scholarship for university. But uh, it is important because uh, sometimes we we give up, give up for some problems, and if we keep trying, we can we can do it. If uh, uh, still it's what difficult is a, a very hard time for me because all of the vacation I was working in a, a very hard working and uh, I don't rest nothing and then go to school but uh, at this day when I I, I see I, I can get that time in my mind it's, it was a special time I, I learned so much I made the transition to the kids to a uh, John uh, uh, an adult people, and I think it gives me character and it gives me some of the qualities that I need now to teach my students, to understand, to teach, and, and to motivate them to, to do their, their best in, in every day. This time is, is so important for life. That is so true. So yeah, uh, there are many things that sometimes we pass through um, that are important, right? And some, I mean, many things, many things. Life is, is amazing because of that one, because we can learn every day. Every day is a new opportunity. And uh, experiences that happen to us, things that we can share with other people also that can help. And uh, sometimes you are right. Sometimes we want to give up. I sometimes it's like, I don't want this any other day. But that is a moment, right? Um, I was, I, I was, I, I guess I told you already that I speak about every, everything about with my, with my son. And a little while ago, I, I was telling him, okay, everybody at some point in their lives, Sometimes they think about suicide just for a moment, just for a few yes. days. But that happens. That happens. And I was telling him, uh, I mean, you can think about that one. You can think that it, it doesn't worth to live. But that is not true. It's just a moment. And that moment is going to pass. It's going to finish. Even if it's, it's a very difficult time, even if you're sick or you, you have a big, big problem. It's going to finish. Everything passes. Good and bad things are moments. So we need to enjoy the good ones and we need to learn from the bad ones, right? And then uh, whenever we have the chance, share with other people. So uh, not only us are the ones who who move on and learn, but also the rest of the people, right? So I believe that that is the way that you can live forever. You tell stories and you teach something and then those things that you taught are going to live forever through the people that are doing those things. So it's a very good thing. Okay. Thank Perfect. Thank you for sharing, David. Um, anybody else wants to share any other thing? It's almost time, but we have a few more minutes. Not at all. Okay, so today is Teacher, Go ahead. The platform is still giving problems in three point one. Uh, I, I let me just. Try. I don't know what is happening. I I write in the in the way that you tell the last, mm. but uh, mm. aren't I, you English? I made it in the way how the mm. teacher said, and for me they mm. are correct. Uh -huh. I believe that we need to be careful on three things in this section. As you can see there, I made it and everything is right, right? So if I do it, it's exactly the same platform, so you should. But sometimes, as I was telling you, these boxes uh, have problems, right? So the first thing is the apostrophe. That little one sometimes we have uh, in the computer, there are symbols that are very similar, but not exactly the same. So we need to be careful on that one first. 
Second one, do not leave a space after the uh, the, qu the question, question mark. Yeah, because if you leave only a space, it's not going to take it. And the error is not an error, but it's something that is happening with this exercise is this little space. So you need to leave a space in between uh, after English and before the question mark. Uh, try the way all the questions are like that. Uh, so you can see here, uh, all of those have that little space. So um, that is the only weird thing that happens. The symbol, as I was telling you, and no spaces at the end. So if you do it that way, it should, it should be working. But if by any chance it's not working, let me know and so we can check what, what else we can do, okay? Okay, because I was trying. I yeah, copy the, the symbol for, for apostrophe from the same platform. Yeah, that is and... that is a good trick. I mean, you can bring it from here, right? So you can copy it from there and paste it here. Yes, I, I copy. Uh -huh. And uh, let me see if they... Yes, I, I use the same uh, uppercase and lowercase. And I don't know what's happening. All of uh, them are ground for you or just one specific, the number one? All number of them, all of them. Yeah, something's going on there. So another thing the that you can Apostrophe could be. Yeah, probably something like that. So delete everything. That is another thing that you can do. Everything. Ah, uh, okay. And then uh, start, I mean, type again, because something is wrong there. Something is not letting you, but it's not that the answer is incorrect. It's, it's something like that uh, as i was telling you this is like like excel that if you have a space the formula that you write sometimes is not going to recognize exactly what you want so delete everything and try again and let's give it a shot okay uh, and let me know if that doesn't work okay thank you very good okay so my friends we're gonna uh, check the attendance and then uh, since it's friday we're gonna go party right so <laughs> The uh, 101 for today is for William Alexander. And let's check Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Good. Uh, David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin Gonzalez Martinez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Morina Duarte. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you tonight. I hope you have a very good night. Rest very well. Have a happy weekend and see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. So, teacher, I keep you <laughs> present. Okay, very well. I got you. So don't worry. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night.
Hello, uh, Wendy and Fernando. Do you have questions or anything like that? 